So for today, we're going to be solving the cube root equations. The cube root equations are the ones that have the three instead of a, just the square root. Cube root have the little three. The ones that without the three, these are square roots, which we learned about in lesson two. The cube root of x with the little three, those are the cube root equations. Okay. So our objective says I can solve cube root equations. So that's our objective for today. Um, they're very similar to the square root. It's just one step is different. Um, so let's look at our prior knowledge. We have the cube root of 8 and the cube root of negative 8. So um, let me do like a side note over here. You know how... Um, what does it mean for the square root of 16? How do we calculate that? How do we get 4? Why is it 4? It's 4 squared. 4 times 4. The number multiplied by itself 2 times that gets you the 16, right? So likewise with this one, I'm trying to figure out what number to the third power would give me 8. So what do you guys think? What number multiplied by itself three times gets us eight? Two, right? Two times two is four times two is eight. Um, cube roots, you can have a negative cube root this time because the number multiplied by itself three times, that gets you a negative eight. Three negatives is actually still a negative. Negative times negative is a positive times another negative would be negative. So that's why this right here is going to actually be a negative 2. So if this value on the inside of the cube root is positive, that means your answer is going to be positive. If the cube root is negative, that means your answer is going to be negative. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and now look at our next slide here. It's a relevance slide. Um, it says cube root functions and cube root equations model many things in our world. Um, it's, we're supposed to have a video, but we don't have a video. I tried looking up the video and I couldn't find it. Um, but anyways, it was supposed to show you how um, keeping satellites in orbit is all about the mass. Like you have to be a certain distance away from the Earth so that you're still orbiting um, around the Earth. If you go too far out, then you're lost in the outer space and there's no, like, anything connecting you to the Earth. Um, so the video was supposed to show us how, like, cube roots and cube functions are used to calculate um, how to keep the satellites in orbit. All right, then we have our concept slide here. We have a radical equation. It contains a variable within a radical or a variable raised to a non-integer rational exponent. We have already seen this slide many times already, um, but today we're going to be focusing on the cube root ones. Um, and as a reminder, our variable has to be under the radical for it to be a radical equation. We need to have equal signs for it to be an equation. And then we have non-examples here. Again, if it doesn't have an equal sign, it's not an equation. If you have a variable, but you don't have the radical with it, then it's not a radical equation, okay? Then we have our um, steps here, the steps to solve a radical equation. This is the exact same as it was for the square root. The only difference is step number two. Um, so step number one is still isolate the radical expression. You still get rid of anything outside the square root first, or cube root in this case. Step two is the only really difference in a cube root is raise both sides of the equation to the appropriate power. So in this case, we have to undo the cube root of x. So to undo a cube root, instead of squaring both sides, we're going to have to cube both sides. Okay, instead of squaring, we have to cube both sides. And then we have to solve whatever you have left over on the inside of the radical. 
And then our last step is to check for extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are going to be similar to what we did for the square root equations. If the left side and the right side do not equal, like if I get a 2 equals 0, if they're not equal, it would be extraneous. And then solutions that are imaginary or create imaginary values would also be extraneous solutions. So, like, for example, if I get the square root of negative 4, that's the same thing as the root 4 times the root of a negative 1. So that'll be like a 2i, and this i is imaginary. So what you guys really need to know is the square root of a negative 1 is actually an imaginary value, okay? So if we ever get a negative inside the square root, that's imaginary because there is no number multiplied by itself that can get you a negative 1. Whenever you square a number, it's always going to be positive. Like a 1 squared is positive 1. A negative 1 squared is also positive 1. So I can't get a squared that will give me a negative 1. So it becomes imaginary, okay? Um, so if we ever get any negatives inside the square root, those would be imaginary values, and then they would be extraneous, okay? Um, before I get to this, I want to have you guys draw a table on your notes. We're going to create a table of roots. You can possibly do it maybe on the back of your booklet, the very back, so you can reference it really quick. Um, you can do it in the back cover, the front cover, just anywhere you know where it's at. You can just flip it all the way to the back cover, like on the outside, so you can just flip it whenever you need it, and it's there. Um, but we're doing the table of roots. Um, because we're going to have to, like, you're not supposed to be using a calculator, um, so we need, I'm going to show you guys the table of roots so you know how to use this, okay? Um, so we're going to create an N column. And then we need an N squared column. And an N to the third column. You can go on to like to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth, to the seventh power. Um, but for today's lesson, we only need to go out to the third power, okay? So on the end column, it's like your root. So like it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and so forth. You can keep going, but I think for today we only need to go out to the 7. Okay. Then to create the table, we look at the squared. So what... Um, for like here, the squared, what's 1 squared? 1. And then 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is? And then 4 squared. And then we get 25, 36, 49. Correct? Then for the cubed, it's 1 to the third power. It's still going to be 1. 2 to the third power, that's 2 times 2 times 2, that's going to give us 8. Then 3 to the third power, that's 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 would be 27. And the fourth one, 4 to the third power, that's 4 times 4 times 4, so 16 times 4 would be 64. And then my 5 to the third power, that's 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. For my 6 to the third power, that's 6 times 6 times 6, so 6 times 6 is 36, 36 times 6, uh, 216, I think. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then for my 7 to the third, that 7 times 7 is 49, times another 7 would be 343, I believe. Okay. 
Okay. Um, again, you're not supposed to be using a calculator for this lesson, but you can use this table of roots. And so I'll show you kind of how to use it. So if I ask you for uh, 4 squared, what's 4 squared? 16. I mean, you should know that already, but to use a table, you would go 4 squared is 16, right? Um, if I ask you for what is um, 6 to the third power, you would look for the 6 and the third column. So 6 to the third is this 216. Okay. Um, so what's 4 to the third power? 54. 54. Okay, good. And I can also go backwards on the table. If I tell you what is the cube root of 125, you would actually start on the third, the cubed column, look for 125, and you go whatever to the end column is. So the cube root of 125 is 5. Okay. Can you guys tell me what is the cube root of 343? 7. Good. All right, so that's how we use the table. I just kind of wanted you guys to have it so um, you know how to use it. So let's look at our first example in our note. Please copy this one. We have the cube root of x is equal to 2. The cube root of x is equal to 2. All right, so my step number one is to get the radical by itself. Is my radical by itself? Is there anything on the outside of the cube root of x? No. No, right? So it's already by itself. So my next step then is to take both sides. Instead of squaring it, I need to get rid of the cube root. So then I have to cube both sides instead of squaring them. That's the only difference from a square root and a cube root. You cube both sides instead of squaring them. Okay. The cube root counts out the cube. We're going to be left with the x is equal to what is 2 to the third power. Again, and you can use your table if you need to, but that 2 times 2 times 2 is going to be what? 8. And we still have to check it like we were doing um, for the square roots. We have to go check now. So check, plug in 8. So I have the cube root of x. My x we got was 8. And we're checking and see if that equals 2. What's the cube root of 8? You can look at the table. Look at the, the cubes. Look for 8 and then go to the end column. The cube root of 8, uh, what did I just do? Cube root of 8, that's going to be 2. So does 2 equal 2? Yes, so this is valid. Again, on your table, you look for the cube root of 8, and that's 2. Oh, like no, it's good. We're doing it like this. Cube root? If it has a cube root, then you look at the third power column. You look for that number, and then you go over to the side. Okay? All right. Um, let's look at this one now. Cube root of x equals negative 4. Okay, this is our second example. Cube root of x equals negative 4. All right, I need the cube root by itself. It already is by itself. So then we have to raise both sides to the third power. The cube root cancels. I'm up with x equals. Notice it's a negative. Three negatives is still going to be negative, right? Negative times negative is a positive times another negative is going to be negative. So this is going to be a negative. Then look at your table. What's 4 to the third power? 64. 64. Okay. X equals negative 64. And then I need to check. 
by plugging it in. So check. Um, I got the cube root of negative 64 is my x. Does that equal negative 4? Again, because I have a negative right here, because I have a negative, my answer is going to be negative. And then check your table. What's the cube root of 64? 4. So does negative 4 equal negative 4? Yes. So this one is valid. Okay, so both our examples here ended up being valid. All right, so let's take it up, uh, kick it up a notch. We're going to make it a little more complicated. So let's have you guys copy this one in your notes. We have 5 times the cube root of 3x plus 1 equals negative 10. Five times the cube root of three X plus one equals negative 10. All right, so just like we were doing with the square roots, remember our goal is to get this by itself first. That means I need to get rid of the five. So I want you guys to have a conversation with your partner because um, when people are working on the homework, they were confused with that five in the front. So talk to your partner and see, do you add five, subtract five, multiply by five, or divide by five on each side? Which operation do we do to get rid of the five? Go ahead and lefty, tell your partner if you're sitting on the left side, share. What operation do we do to get rid of the five? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Lefties, tell your partner. How do I get rid of the five? What'd you guys say? How many of you guys say divide by five? Subtract five? No? Okay, good. We don't subtract five because there's no addition or subtraction symbol in between. If they're touching um, like right next to each other, remember that's this, it's basically like a parenthesis there. They're being multiplied together, okay? So to get rid of the five, you have to divide both sides by five. So five cancel, and we get the cube root of 3x plus 1 equals, what's negative 10 divided by 5? That gives you negative 2. And then how do we get rid of the cube root? We end up having to cube both sides. So then the cube root cancels the cube. We're left with the 3x plus 1. And what's negative 2 to the third power? Negative 8. Good. And then we need to solve for x now. Now you're left with whatever was on the inside of the radical. So now we use inverse operations to solve for x here. So I have a 1 and a 3. We're still doing PEMDAS in reverse. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And reverse. We have to do addition and subtraction first, then multiplying and dividing. So what do I get rid of first? The 3 or the 1? The 1. The 1. We subtract 1 to both sides. Those cancel. We get 3x equals. Was negative 8 minus 1? Negative 9. And then to get rid of the 3, we have to do what? Divide both sides by 3. X equals what's negative 9 divided by 3? Negative 3. Negative 3. Um, we still have to go check it. So check. Plug in a negative 3. 
I have five on the outside. Comes the cube root of three x, but x I'm plugging in on negative three plus one. And I'm checking to see if that equals negative 10. Most of this, you guys can kind of do mental math for it, but um, like what's three times negative three? Three times negative three? Negative nine. Negative nine plus one? Negative eight. It would be a negative eight. So we have five times the cube root of negative eight. Um, and then what is the cube root of negative eight? So this becomes five times is negative because the eight's negative. And then what's the cube root of eight? Two. two. And five times negative two? Negative 10. Negative 10. So did that equal negative 10? Yes, so this yeah. one is valid. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have you guys try the next example. Go ahead and copy this one. Um, and then I'll show you guys the solution after. The cube root of uh, five minus x plus seven equals six. So if I check it, I'm gonna plug in a six. Cube root of five minus, my x is six, and I have a plus seven on the outside equals six. What's five minus six? Negative 1. And then for this part, too, somebody got confused in first period. The cube root of negative 1 is going to be what? One. Negative 1. Because it's negative on the inside, it becomes a negative 1. The cube root goes away because it's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 gets you a negative 1. And then we add 7. And what's negative 1 plus 7? And 6 equals 6, so that means this one is valid. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and look at our next example. This time is the ones with the fraction. So... This is kind of like the ones with the fraction with the square root, which I haven't showed you how to do them yet, but it's the same concept. So go ahead and copy this one, and I'll explain what to do. So you have 8 minus, parenthesis, 2x plus 5 to the 1 third power equals 3. Um, so this 1 third is actually like an exponent. It's not like times 1 third, it's an exponent. The 1 third is in the exponent, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do a side note over here for you guys. You don't have to copy it down. You can if you want to, but you don't have to, but this is my side note here. Um, if you ever have a fraction exponent, like x to the 1 third, that means you take the denominator and that's like your index in the root. So this is going to be like a cube root of x raised to the first power. Um, so like the 1 becomes the exponent and then the denominator is your index. So it's a cube root of x. If I have x to the 1 half, that means that the denominator 2 is your index. That means it's a square root of x raised to the first power um but because it's a square root you don't have to put the little two right here it's just implied to be there okay if i go x to the one fourth that means the four is the index that's the fourth root of x okay 
Um, so that's just my little psych note, just so you know. If you ever have something raised to a fraction, it's just the denominator tells you what the index is for your radical, okay? So in this case, because I have a raised to the one-third, I have to take this whole thing in the parentheses, and then I change it to a cube root with the radical of um, 3 in the index, okay? So then this becomes 8. Minus, I'm just going to rewrite it. The 3 in the index tells me that this is going to be a cube root of 2x plus 5. And that's going to equal 3. Again, all I did was rewrite this like this. Take the 3 in the denominator and that goes in the index. And then we put whatever was in the parentheses inside the radical. And that's what we're supposed to do with the square root ones, the ones that I haven't showed you how to do yet. We kind of just skipped them for now. They're raised to the one half, so it's kind of the same thing. You just change it to a square root. Okay. Um, so, again, now I can solve it just like we were solving. Uh, my goal is to get this by itself. So, I have 8 minus the cube root of 2x plus 5 equals 3. I need the cube root by itself. I need to get rid of the 8, and I need to get rid of the negative. A lot of people get confused here. Um, remember, you want the 8 to be a 0. So do I add 8 to both sides? Do I subtract 8, multiply, or divide by 8? Go ahead and write these this time. Tell your partner, what do you think we're going to do to the 8? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide by 8 on both sides. Write these. All right, anybody have a guess? What are we going to do to the 8? Subtract the 8. How many of you guys said subtract the 8? Raise your hand. Subtract the 8. I see like three of you guys. How many said add 8? Nobody? Multiply by 8? No? You guys have no idea? Raise your hand. No? No? Okay. <laughs> Only like five people rose their hand for the first one. But yes, this, we do subtract eight to each side. A lot of people get confused because of the negative. The negative is just there as like um, you're subtracting the radical, really. But you have to actually subtract eight to each side. Because when you do that, what's eight minus eight? Well, no, 8 minus 8. Oh, right zero. zero. That's what you want. If you do 8 plus 8, that actually means, ends up being 16, not 0. Okay, so you have to subtract 8. Um, and then I get the negative in the front. Don't drop the negative. And we get the cube root of 2x plus 5 equals 3 minus 8 is negative 5. And again, my goal is to get rid of anything on the outside of the radical. What do I still have on the outside? The negative. We don't want a negative. So just like we did on the um, previous example, how do we get rid of the negative? I don't add. Um, divide by negative 1. If you think back to the example, we had a negative x, we divide by the negative to make a positive, right? So divide by the negative 1 to each side. That way, negative divided by negative becomes positive. Cube root of 2x plus 5 equals negative 5 divided by negative 1 is going to be positive 5. And then to get rid of the cube root, again, we cube both sides. The cube root cancels the cube. We're left with the 2x plus 5 equals, was 5 to the third power? 125. Again, you can look at your table. You go 5 and then go to the end cubed column, it's 125. 
And then here I need to get the x by itself. So PEM does in reverse. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Do I get rid of the two or the five first? The five. So we have to subtract five to each side. Subtract five. I get a two x equals what? 120. 120. And then to get x by itself, divide by 2. And we get x equals 60. And now we have to check it. Um, but again, you want to check by plugging it into the original equation. So check. Um, I would plug it into this one where you changed it to a cube root instead of the one with the fraction. So we have 8 minus the cube root of 2 times x, which is 60, um, plus 5. And I'm checking to see if that equals 3. So again, you can do this using mental math here. I got 8 minus. What's 2 times 60? Mm -hmm. And 120 plus 5? Mm -hmm. So I got the cube root of 125, which again, look at your table. Now you're looking at the n cubed. Look for 125 and go to the um, n column. What's the cube root of 125? Five. five. So I get eight minus five, which is three. And that equals three. So this is valid. So my solution is 60, is a valid answer. All right, um, for sake of time, I'm gonna skip the practice problem. And this one too. Um, because I wanna show you guys an example where we end up with like a squared on the inside. So go ahead and copy this one. In your notes, we have 3 times the x squared plus 9 equals 2. It's the cube root of x squared plus 9 equals 2. All right, my goal is to get rid of anything... That's on the outside of the radical. Is there anything on the outside of the radical? Mm -hmm. No. So then we have to now just get rid of the cube root by taking the cube of each side. Cube root cancel out the cubed. We're going to be left with x squared plus 9 equals what's 2 to the third power? 8. And then to solve for x, notice I have a squared, x squared. I can either subtract 8, but if I do that, I might not get like dots or anything. So I would just subtract 9 on this side instead. Subtract 9 to each side. Those cancel. And I get a x squared equals, what's 8 minus 9? Negative 1. And then how do I get rid of the squared? You do the inverse. You take the square root this time. The square root cancels out the squared. I'm left with the x equals. Anytime you take the square root of something, you need a plus and a minus in the front. Okay? But. Can I have a negative inside the radical? No. No, this actually ends up being i. Remember, um, again, on our side note, I'm going to put it over here. Side note, the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. Um, so I get an imaginary value. This is imaginary.
which means this is actually extraneous. And because it's extraneous, I really have no solution. And again, that symbol's like a circle with a slash through it. Because I end up with the negative inside the radical right here, um, that's imaginary, and I can't have imaginary values, so it's extraneous, so we say no solution. Okay. Um, I could end up with a square root that's positive, but you would have to have a plus and a minus, um, which that's good. That's what's going to happen on the next example. So let's have you guys go ahead and... Oh, did I, oh, I forgot. I forgot to take out the solution from the slide. But go ahead and copy this one and then see if you guys can solve it. And then I'll show you guys the solution in a second. The mm -hmm. All right. So I know most of you guys kind of are already there. Um, but when we solve this one, first you take the cube of each side. So cube each side, the cube root cancel out the cube. We're left with x squared plus 2, and 3 cubed is 27. So we subtract 2 on each side, that gives us 25. Um, and then we take the square root of each side to get rid of the squared. But anytime we take a square root, we need one that's positive and one that's negative. So I really have a negative 5 and a positive 5 for my possible solutions. And then you guys have to go check each one, okay? So on the checking part, you check both of them. Check x equals a positive 5. So I got the cube root of my positive 5 squared plus 2. Does that equal 3? Well, what's um, 5 squared? 5 squared is 25. 25 plus 2 is 27. And what's the cube root of 27? Does that equal 3? Yes. So I know this one's valid. Um, and then check now the negative 5. So cube root of... A negative 5 squared plus 2, does that equal 3? Well, anything squared is always positive. So what's negative 5 squared and 25 plus 2? 27. 27. So we got the same thing. Cube root 27 is 3. So both of them are valid. So both of the x values are your solution here. Okay. All right, that's as far as we can go for today. The bells, bells, ring. Um, don't worry about the homework because that's what we're going to do in class tomorrow.